San Diego is not a small town at all, but I notice people get kind of tense in San Diego. It's kind of weird to me. I was here last week performing two nights in this show, and it was fun. I mean, like, it's all right, but people kind of tense up in this city. And I, I mean, the problem with me is I do so many of these that when people tense up, I feel like I should go further. <laughs> it's true, I get like, fuck it, you don't like that? You're really going to hate this. <laughs> Here's what I will tell you guys about myself or about what's going on. Uh, I don't know if anybody here has ever been here before, but has anybody here ever seen a homeless guy sitting on the sidewalk drinking a beer and thought to yourself, well, aren't we having a relaxing day? <laughs> or has anybody here ever been in a really good mood and made the mistake of thinking everybody else was in a good mood? Sucks when that happens, huh? Had it happen to me a couple weeks ago, hanging out at a street fair. Saw a homeless lady I always see in front of the comedy store. Like I said, I was in a good mood. So I walk up to her and I'm like, hey, why aren't you in front of the comedy store? Without giving me a beat, she looks back at me and says, hey, why don't you eat shit? <laughs> Not a very good attitude. Might have been that same bad attitude that found her ass homeless. <laughs> Some people think I'm being mean when I do that joke. I am not. I'm just sick of people taking their miserable lives out on me. People at the top of my list right now are servers with attitude. Yeah, it's true. I don't in a lot of restaurants. I don't have a lot of choice. I've tried special diets, like I tried Atkins, I tried South Beach. And sometimes my order's particular enough that I want to tell myself to fuck off. <laughs> but I hate when I ask for something small and I get a sigh or an ugly face. I feel like letting these servers know, look, I'm not the one that got you pregnant at 15. <laughs> I'm not the one that made daddy leave, and I'm not the one that keeps putting off your GED test. So how about some fucking ranch? <laughs> At least you guys, the servers here are actual servers. In LA, we don't have any servers. No, they're all actors and actresses. And for them, it goes a little different. For them, it goes something like this. Yeah, I'm sorry I didn't get the part on Gilmore Girls, but it looks to me like you've got a role. You're playing my server. So why don't you go back to the kitchen and get into your space, or whatever it is you actors do, and get me some fucking ranch. Action. I have been in a bit of a bad mood myself lately. Uh, I recently had to quit drinking. Or at least that's what the judge said. <laughs> and I realized I had been drinking too much. You know you've been drinking too much when you have to call your friends the next day to make sure they're still talking to you. Get deleted off a couple of MySpace accounts. It's like I was in your top eight yesterday. What the fuck? <laughs> I did used to drink way too much, so I picked it up in Vegas. I lived there for four and a half years. I don't know where the slogan came from, Las Vegas, whatever happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. When I lived there, the slogan was Las Vegas, come on vacation, leave on probation. <laughs> and there you just drink all the time. You know, I used to drink morning, afternoon, and night. To be honest with you guys, if it hadn't been for all the speed, I wouldn't have, don't know how I would have gone through it. Here's the thing, I know some people get uncomfortable when I talk about doing drugs. I don't really care, because I did a lot of drugs. I did a lot of speed in particular. I did speed until I realized there was no good reason to be up for three days at a time. <laughs> Cleaning out a drawer shouldn't take four hours. And jacking off should not be an all-day affair. <laughs> Eventually you will chafe. I did used to do a lot of drugs. I even smoked crack for a short while. Not something I'm proud of. Crack isn't a very fun drug. The only thing crack ever makes you want to do is smoke more crack. I will tell you guys, one time I was hanging out with my cousins and we thought we dropped a piece of rock on the floor. So we're all down there looking for it. And I remember thinking to myself, what the hell are you doing? Too bad the next thought that ran through my head was, you better stop all this thinking and find that fucking rock. <laughs> Now the only drug I do is marijuana. I do smoke weed occasionally. Here's the thing with marijuana though. The other week I was, uh, well actually 420 was the date of it. I was doing a 420 show for anybody that's not familiar, 420 marijuana. So uh, I was doing an official 420 show. It was a taping and everything. And before the show there was a woman handing out cookies, right? So I, had, I take three of the cookies and then later on in the night I see her and she was like, you know, so how are you doing? And I was like, I'm doing all right, but I'm not feeling anything from those cookies. And she was like, oh, there was nothing in those cookies. I was like, bitch, did you think I really wanted fucking cookies? <laughs> <laughs> Went to visit my parents. That's a nice sober trip. Yeah, my parents are super nice to me, though. I shouldn't even do jokes about them. I try not to because they are really nice to me. Like uh, a couple years ago, I went home for my birthday. They bought me a new car. 
But the kind of car I got was a brand new Oldsmobile Alero. Yeah, kind of an old man car. I guess I am in great because I let them know I would have preferred a Honda. Then they got me back when they let me know they would have preferred a straight son. <laughs> Don't act like nobody knew I was gay. <laughs> no, and the thing is, like, LA is one of the few cities where I still feel like I have to say that I'm gay. In other cities, I feel like people can tell. In LA, it can be really hard to tell who's gay, who's metro, and who's just Armenian. <laughs> Somebody in the kitchen knows Armenians. <laughs> I'll tell you guys, it's hard though. I mean, because, you know, you have to come out of the closet night after night, you know, especially, you know, if you're a gay comic, you do. And sometimes it goes all right, and sometimes it's a little bit like a Thanksgiving dinner gone wrong. But the thing that gets me is, like, I have to be careful how I say it, because people will get really weird. I'll tell you guys the two worst ways. First one went like this. Hi, I'm gay. Done a couple shows, running out of ways to say it. Never goes over well. That and cover your assholes, boys, there's a fag in the room. <laughs> Try that shit in a redneck bar. <laughs> yeah, I perform in really white and rednecky rooms. I perform in some rooms that are so white and rednecky, sometimes my act doesn't even feel like an act, it feels like a really long suicide note. <laughs> I don't get asked to do a lot of gay shows. I don't get asked to do gay shows because I'm honest about the fact that I don't understand everything other gay people do either. Like a couple weeks back, I was at a gay pride parade. There were different points while I was watching the parade where I remember thinking to myself, this is really fucking gay. <laughs> Can we take it down a notch, please? I'm getting uncomfortable. I don't understand the gay pride bumper sticker for anybody that's not familiar. That's a rainbow flag. Yeah, I myself don't have one of these because does my car really have to be gay too? <laughs> and if you're a guy and you put one of these bumper stickers on like a Mini Cooper or a Mazda Miata, don't we already know you're gay? <laughs> you're driving a butt plug with wheels. <laughs> I sometimes offend other gay people and I don't even mean to. I'll give you guys an example. A couple weeks back I'm hanging out outside of a club after I finished performing. A woman walks up to me and starts talking to me. Halfway through the conversation, she lets me know she's a lesbian. So I'm like, okay, cool. She's like, did you know I was a lesbian as soon as you saw me? And I was like, no, actually, when I first saw you, I thought you were a man that had really let himself go. <laughs> I wish that was just a joke. <laughs> I don't understand that though, I don't understand that about the gay community, and a lot of straight people don't even know this, but a lot of times gay men and lesbians don't get along. I do get along with lesbians, as a matter of fact, sometimes I wish I was a lesbian, because then I could stop working out. <laughs> you know, that joke actually killed in a lesbian heavy audience, which is not to be confused with the heavy lesbian audience. <laughs> I will tell you guys, I have trouble relating to people lately. I have trouble relating to people because I don't really have any gay friends anymore. You know, I moved to LA and all of my friends are comics. So all of my friends are straight and they're dating and I'm gay and I cruise. Yeah, so a lot of times our stories don't really match up. Like just today, my friend Chris called me and he was like, I ended up taking that girl out on a date the other night, bro. And I was like, I sucked a dude's dick in a bush last night. <laughs> Bro. <laughs> Sometimes when I do that joke, the straight guys get in the audience get uncomfortable, and I don't really understand that because it's not like I'm going to be hiding in a fucking bush after the show. <laughs> Under the bush. <laughs> I hate that people think that because I'm a gay man, I don't have female friends or I don't like females. Like, there's still people who, th who think that, and that's ridiculous to me. I do have a lot of female friends. Uh, but one thing I hate about women is that because I'm the gay friend, they feel like they can share absolutely anything with me. Yeah, I'll give you guys an example. Uh, a couple days ago, I missed a messaging with my friend Sally. Sally sends me this message exactly. My young boyfriend just left town. My cunt really hurts. Yeah, which is a disgusting message to get. I wasn't really comfortable with the use of the word cunt in this context. And the other thing that got on my nerves is Sally is my friend that's slutty enough that I don't think her pussy's even capable of queefing at this point. I think it just sort of sighs every once in a while. <sighs> 
get tired of people asking me the same questions over and over. And you know, like when you travel, people ask you the same questions. They think they're being original. Like people always ask me how I feel about gay marriage. Gay marriage I don't really like to talk about because as ungay triotic as this is going to sound, I'm not big on the whole gay marriage thing, but I'm not big on marriage, period, because I don't know if anybody, any of you guys have ever had this happen before, but has anybody here ever had somebody use the end of a relationship as an excuse to basically rob you? <laughs> yeah, you just come home and stuff's missing and you feel like, did you really want to break up or did you just need some new shit? <laughs> it's the rough part about being gay, you can actually lose your boyfriend and your favorite pair of pants in the same day. <laughs> Gay adoption, that's another one I get asked about. And uh, gay adoption I don't like to talk about a whole lot because I feel like people are trying to argue with me. It's my personal feeling is that as long as people can otherwise pass the screening process, they should be allowed to, to adopt. Argument I get is always the same though. That's what the kids will get confused. Tell you guys the truth, I don't buy this argument because when I was growing up, I, I knew a couple of kids that had lesbian moms and I never really saw what was so confusing. I'd always just assume dad was the one with the mullet and mom had the short perm. <laughs> I think the only people I'm worried about having kids are transsexuals and that's just because I think it'll be scary for the kids having mom's temper and dad's strength in the same body. <laughs> no more waiting till dad gets home, I'm gonna kick your ass myself. <laughs> I was traveling a lot during the whole Kramer and Michael Richards situation, if you guys remember that. Yeah, I got tired of people asking me about that, too. I will tell you guys how I felt about that. At first, I was extremely offended, and then I remembered, hey, I'm not fucking black. <laughs> now, I don't mind doing that joke because 50 Cent did an entire interview where he kept using the word faggot. The black community didn't rally to my side. We can't all fight each other's battles. I will tell you guys when I had a hard time with that joke, though. I had a hard time with that joke during Black History Month. But I think for a lot of non-black people, it almost always feels like Black History Month. I mean, we have to listen to black people talking extra loud on their cell phones, or talking through every movie at the theater, or disciplining their kids in the grocery store, and we just feel like, all right, we get it already, you're free. <laughs> I notice everybody looking at the one black guy in the room. <laughs> Don't do it. <laughs> Abort. <laughs> Here's the thing I'll tell you guys. Uh, not too long ago, a friend of mine, Fu, black comic, comes up to me and says, you know what I hate? I hate when gay people compare their struggle to the civil rights struggle. I was like, okay, I don't do that anyway. He's like, he's like, I don't see how you guys think you can compare what you're going through to my being a slave for 400 years and picking cotton. I was like, Fu, when's the last time you picked fucking cotton? <laughs> you work for American Eagle Outfitters. <laughs> You fold cotton. <laughs> Get tired of people asking me what I am. A lot of people ask me what I am. A lot of people do mistake me for Asian or Filipino, which I don't usually mind. The only time I get worried is when people ask if I'm Native American because it always makes me wonder if I've been drinking too much. <laughs> Glad you guys had a good sense of humor about that because I notice a lot of times when I do that joke, the white people in the audience get really uncomfortable. And I don't really understand that because it's just a little alcoholism joke. I mean, it's not like I stole their land. <laughs> A little bit of white guilt in the room. I don't do that joke because I stereotype anyway. I do that joke because I was raised in a small town in Arizona. Spent a lot of time drinking and partying with natives. One girl in particular, I think her Indian name was Sleeps on Bar. <laughs> yeah, so I don't think it's racist when I say that drinking with natives is a part of hounded up in AA. Just like I don't think it's racist when I say that smoking weed with black people is a part of hounded up in Roscoe's Chicken and Waffles. <laughs> I will answer the question. I am Mexican American or Chicano, depending on how you want to put it. I always dread telling people that because I always get the same thing. Well, you don't even look Mexican. Yeah, I'm sorry, I forgot my leaf blower at home. <laughs> I am Mexican American, but I don't speak Spanish. There's a reason for that. That's because growing up, it was always my parents' secret code language. It's true, someone's in trouble, they don't want you to know something, they switch to Spanish. That kind of pisses me off because I feel like now I've missed out on a part of my own culture, as well as being able to communicate with a whole other group of people, and all because those two assholes wanted to play fucking wind talkers. <laughs> people don't understand growing up gay and Mexican can be hard, because uh, there are some people in my family, Mexicans try to be really macho, so there are some people in my family that because my parents are cool with the fact that I'm gay, they think that they raised me to be gay. 
which is ridiculous, but if that's their point of view, they're welcome to it. And I don't even care if they say it, but I think there's a time and a place for everything. Like, if you think my parents raised me to be gay, that's your business. But I don't think my quinceanera was a time to bring that shit up. <laughs> or I was in my dress. <laughs> Well, I'll tell you guys, I told you a lot of people mistake me for another race. I don't know how it is, other Mexicans have this way of looking at me, knowing exactly what I am. So they come up to me and expect me to speak Spanish. As soon as I tell them I don't, it always goes the same way. You don't speak Spanish? Why not? Mm, maybe because I was born and raised in the United States? Second question goes like this. Well, if you don't speak Spanish, then what kind of Mexican are you? Mm, maybe the kind that isn't going to flinch if immigration comes busting up in this bitch. <laughs> so another question I get people asking me. I get people asking me how I feel about immigration. I would tell you guys, as a Mexican-American, I go back and forth. Like, sometimes I'm really pro-Mexican and I feel like everybody should be able to stay. And sometimes I'm ready to call immigration just to free up a fucking dryer at the laundromat. <laughs> when it comes to language, there's only th one thing gets on my nerves worse than other Hispanics giving me a hard time about not speaking Spanish. And that's when non-Hispanics do it. Yeah, this gets on my nerves because non-Hispanics, as soon as they find out I'm Mexican, they just assume they have a translator. They don't bother to test it out. <laughs> just have them put you on the spot. Had it happened to me not too long ago in Panorama City, for anyone that's not familiar, very Mexican area of LA. Hanging out with a friend of mine named Sable. Sable happens to be a transsexual, but I'm sure everybody here watched this Springer, so you know what that is. So me and Say we are in the Western Union in Panorama City, get to the front of line, woman behind the window speaks nothing but Spanish. So Sable looks at me and she says, girl, because that's the way gay people talk to each other, tell her I need to send this money. I said, Sable, I don't speak Spanish. She said, girl, how are you going to be Mexican and not speak Spanish? I said, I don't know, bitch, how are you going to be a woman and not have a pussy? <laughs> Thanks a lot, guys. Have a good day.